Hi, my name is Danielle Torres, and I would like to introduce you to my photo history project for Photo One Spring Semester. I really hope you enjoy getting to know Sally Mann from the 80s, a monumental photographer who went against the grain to create something completely different. It is the 80s and my career is progressing. My name is Sally Mann. I am the one who goes where nobody else will go. I look for that part of life that everyone is afraid to approach, afraid to acknowledge. I see things in a different way. To me, a photograph is the most powerful when it reflects this passion of mine to capture the unthinkable. Even if it shocks, horrifies, or simply confuses the people, it makes them think. I started out my photography career just as any other would. I went to school, took classes, and got a job. But soon into my work, I realized that I wanted something more. I wanted to dig deeper and discover something different than the rest. I have always had that innate drive that has drawn me to my subjects. Most people are stunned when I say that I have photographed people in the nude and even decaying bodies. It was my third publishing that helped me to break the mold of the normal and to really let my true passion be known to the world. The New York Times once told me that probably no other photographer in history has enjoyed such a burst of success in the art world as I have. I worked for years photographing my own three children, all under the age of 10, at a summer cabin on the river. This project is one that showed children in a different light than they had ever been seen before. Many people wrote letters to me, appalled with my work. They accused me of child pornography and said that it was disgraceful to be displaying young children in such a raw way. But I did not see my work like that at all. It hurt me to know that people could accuse me of such a thing. I felt as though one of my most prideful accomplishments had been broken into pieces by a force much greater than myself. To me, my photographs were simply a reflection of the truth of nature and humankind. Children are to be displayed through loneliness and sexuality. It is their nature, and it is my nature to show this reality with the most accurate depiction. Later in my career, in 2001, I felt extremely accomplished when Time Magazine named me the best photographer of the year. I began to move away from such controversial work that I was used to, and instead began to focus on simple landscapes. I photographed all works using a 100-year-old bellows camera, and this style of photograph that it created has be become synonymous to myself as a photographer, along with my iconic black and white portraits. Landscapes were fine, but they were not me. Safe is not me. Rare and obscene, that is me. So all I can say is that I went back to my roots. This time, I wanted to stretch the limits even more. I published my fifth book titled, What Remains. I photographed my dead greyhound, Ava, and her decaying body. To get this effect to look more realistic, I photographed at different sites, such as the Forensic Anthropology Facility, known as the Body Farm, and the site of the Battle of Antietam, the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. Again, some people were appalled at what they saw. I think, though, that they were just shocked to see something such as death depicted with such truthfulness. This second time around, I got over the criticism that I was facing. I realized for the first time that life is about one thing, following your inner nature and not allowing that to be smothered by others in the world. I put all else aside and focused, with my complete effort, on my photography. Children, nude, death, anything. I embrace the feared. That's just who I am.